Just over a year ago, I became a videographer. And over the last year, it's given me the ability to travel to different countries and work with some top level action sports athletes. When discussing this with my peers, they're often interested in how I get the connections to do the video work I do. And one question that often comes up is, how do I know so many people? In a generation where we've been raised with social media and you can reach someone in a matter of seconds, it makes me wonder why we feel we can't make genuine connections online. You see, Generation Z is the first generation to be raised with the internet at every stage of their life. This means that they have pictures posted them of a baby on Facebook by their parents, all the way through to their most recent Instagram post with their friends at a music festival this last weekend. What this means is that I can research you and your story and understand your narrative before I've even said a single word to you. And what this has created is a generation that is inherently aware of their personal brand and their story. This means that they often make personal decisions and are purposeful decisions based off of that story and how it's developing. And the reason why Generation Z has such an opportunity to create a global network is because of the changing landscape of our economy over the past 25 years. You see, with the boom of the social media and the internet in the early 2000s, creating a whole new sector of our economy, we are now only now starting to see the real value of an online network that connects people around the world. You see, the network effects phenomena has become globalized and businesses that are able to create, interact with and utilize this community are becoming quickly the most successful. But with this immense opportunity that this generation has, as well as the tools to utilize this opportunity, why do we still have this lingering doubt over how someone can, can connect with another individual around the world? Research completed in 2010 regarding the topic of the value of reconnecting showed that when networking, meaningful connections come from dormant friends rather than new acquaintances most of the time. Dormant friends are those that perhaps you haven't spoken to in a while, but you share that connection with. Maybe it's that high school friend that you haven't spoken to for a couple of years, or maybe it's a family friend that actually you've never spoken to, but your family know of them. They're really just someone who shares a little bit of your story. But now they're not dormant friends anymore. With the updates of social media, they know where you were last week. And maybe you exchanged a couple of messages because you or they posted a picture next to the Eiffel Tower. You see, with the ability to share and give live updates about one's journey, the community around them can have a more active role in their story. For myself, my first freelance international video project came from a family dinner about eight months ago. I sat down for dinner and a family friend was joining us that I'd never met before. And it just so happened that he was a founder of a startup in the action sports space, the space that I wanted to get into for video. While we sat down and ate sausage and mashed potato, the topic of video marketing came up. And he had seen actually some of my work up until that point, which I'd posted to YouTube. After discussing a little bit more about my aspirations with video, we exchanged contact information. And two months later, I was on a flight to Mexico for four days for a commercial shoot for the company. Now, not only is this an example of how that dormant connection can really turn into something more than you could have imagined, but it's also an example of it's who knows you. You see, I had a mentor recently say to me that we've overcome this idea of it's not what you know, it's who you know, and we're now at the stage of it's who knows you. And the reason because of this is we get an insight into people's lives deeper than we ever did before we get a second opinion on who they are from them online. You see, your elevator pitch has now become a short story. Take me, for example. Someone goes and searches my Instagram. They now see a little bit of my video portfolio. They see that I like to travel and the people I associate with. And so within my network, 
I'm no longer just a name, reputation and a service, but I'm a person with a story and a level of vulnerability. And on top of that, this network and community grows and develops with me, with the constant updates of projects that I'm working on and places that I'm visiting. People can now decide to become a part of that story and get involved rather than me having to constantly bring people in to complete projects. You see, people become invested in your story and your journey rather than your business and your service. But all of this really just serves to highlight the opportunity that Generation Z has rather than highlighting the tools that they also possess to really make the most of this new globalized network. So firstly, let's discuss the degree of separation. One degree of separation is a friend of a friend. And many research studies show that six degrees of separation is the degrees of separation until you reach your desired connection. In a professional setting, that is reduced to either one or two degrees. Previously, we'd ask around in our, in our network for connections of a friend of a friend for a said industry that we're trying to develop our connections in. And that would normally take up to a week, two weeks, as they rummage around in their connections, set up meetings with that individual. Now I can go online, I search using a keyword, and I can find everybody in that sector. I can then sort them between 5, 10, 15 miles away from me and share that with my network to see if they know anybody within that space. They can then set up a group chat with me and that individual. And then by the end of the day, I can be setting up an interview with them. But maybe you don't have anybody who's a friend of a friend and that can introduce you. And you do have to make that first message. But this is where it gets really exciting. Now you have the tool of social media. You can make that first message personal. Perhaps you comment on a place they recently visited or maybe a project they recently completed or even the fact they have a really cute dog. Maybe you don't start with those things. That might be a little bit stalkerish, but be emotionally intelligent about it. Talk about dogs, explain that you like them and if they like them and then comment on their cute dog. But whatever it is, you're now connecting with their narrative and their story rather than just connecting with their business and their service. Research shows us, shows us that the more diverse ways in which we create common ground with an individual, the deeper that connection becomes faster. Social media has given you all of these options of common ground. You simply have to just pick yours and begin the conversation. But let's take a step back. Why should you be taking this much effort and time into developing your network and your community? Dan Pina has a saying, show me the five people closest to you and I'll show you your future. Well, according to research, the saying should be, show me the people three degrees of separation away from you and I'll show you how you're feeling. Let me explain. In 2008, James Fowler and Nicholas Christaki performed a study in which they took data from the longest running health study and they analyzed the data. And what they found was, you're not as independent as you thought. They found that individuals three degrees of separation away from you had a statistically significant effect on your happiness a 6% statistically significant effect on your happiness. Now you may be going, well, 6%, that's a very small amount of my happiness. Well, let me add some perspective to that. If I gave you a $10,000 raise in salary, statistically, that would raise your happiness by 2%. Now gives, this gives a little bit of magnitude to the findings that they had in their study. And now networking has never been about developing your personal outlook or even increasing your salary. Networking has always been about developing a community of people around you that have a positive impact in your life 
to the ways in which they connect and interact with your story. So as a generation, let's make the most of this global network that we have now. But let's also be aware of the effect that it has on us. Ultimately, I don't look at the number of people in my network as a measure of its value. I simply just invest in a community that's invested in my story as I am in theirs. And the result is happiness across a global network of people. Thank you very much.